welcome to the Journey Alive program. Whether you're joining us for the first time or you're back for another journey with us, we're so very happy that you've decided to come and share your time with us. Coralie has never really been formally introduced to some of you. Many of you have been here for many sessions before, but know very little about Coralie, her education, her experience, or her life, aside from the bits and pieces that she shares during the meetings. Today, we're going to provide you with a brief overview of Coralie's life and what sparked her to embark on the development of this program. <coughs> Coralie Murphy was born in Prince Edward Island, but moved to Cape Breton at a very early age. She has always considered herself to be a very proud Cape Bretoner at heart. She decided to stay on our island to complete her post-secondary studies at the former University College of Cape Breton. While there, she earned both a Bachelor of Arts in Community Studies with a sport option and a Bachelor of Science degree. Once her studies at the university were complete, she moved to British Columbia and attended UBC. From there, she relocated to Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, where she completed a three-year massage therapy program. <clears throat> Upon completion of her entrance to practice examination in Toronto, Coralie decided to make her way back to Cape Breton, where she would establish her own practice. Coralie has also completed five, year, five years of study in osteopathic medicine. Since 1999, Coralie has owned and operated massage therapy clinics in Port Hawkesbury in Sydney, Nova Scotia, and in Fort McMurray, Alberta. From the onset of her career, she has recognized the need to utilize an integrative process in her practice. This method of practice requires a multifaceted approach that includes understanding the intricacies of how the mind, body, and spirit can align to constitute a healthy and happy human existence. As a direct result of sitting with her patients in private practice, she recognized that there was a great lack of awareness and knowledge in this regard. In 2009, Coralie embark embarked on what would be the beginning of what is now known as the Journey Alive Life Summit Series program. This program had humble beginnings, starting with a small group of just six people. The subsequent years would see this group rapidly expand, reaching out to numbers in the thousands. Her following has grown to include people here in our community, across North America, and abroad. The Journey Alive program arms its participants with the knowledge and support that they require to live a life of balance, enhanced health, and awareness. It is at this point that I have to share a little tidbit about Coralie Murphy's <coughs> intro bio. Coralie provided me only three paragraphs outlining her education, her career to date, and a paragraph about her Journey Alive program. You see, for those that know Coralie, Coralie is very humble, and she is much better at championing others than she is at blowing her own horn. The magnitude of her efforts outside of her practice are, for the most part, kept very quiet, but should be shared and celebrated. Coralie continues to participate in courses and seminars, and she spends a phenomenal amount of time reading and researching health and wellness, and the relative science and psychology behind it. Coralie's passion is people. She is constantly giving and sharing, and guiding and helping and caring. And the only thing that she asks in return is that we pay it forward. She wants everyone to be healthy, happy, and to be the best that they can be, living no day less than great. And she will go to the ends of the earth to arm us with the information and support that we need in order to get there. Coralie lived in isolation for a year on a native reserve in Fox Lake during 2006-2007. No phone, no television, no internet for months. Let's just say that she's very comfortable with herself. She meditates regularly and devours any health, wellness, and psychology-related information that she can get her healing hands on. Coralie has an amazing and engaging demeanor, as you will experience here today. She is intelligent, witty, gentle, <coughs> understanding, spirited, and one of the strongest women I know, with an energy that is contagious and boundless. She is also an extraordinarily engaging speaker, and as such, her Journey Alive sessions have become increasingly popular, bursting at the seams, no small feat for a community the size of ours. Coralie's life has presented some harsh and emotional challenges over the last few years. She lost a very close friend in a motorcycle accident about a decade ago, and lost her only brother Jason, who was also her very best friend, to a motorcycle accident in 2009. 
Instead of letting those major life-altering events knock her down, Coralie chose to draw strength from them and focus not on her grief, but on helping others. Through Coralie's sessions, which are offered for free to anyone who wishes to participate, she's helped a notable number of people significantly improve their health and well-being. She not only offers us an eight-week cleanse detox initiative, she is preparing us for a lifestyle adjustment to a healthier way of living. Where I work, she's referred to as the High Priestess, <laughs> as the bulk of our team have been the beneficiaries of her knowledge and her caring, and all have experienced an improved state of being from the awareness that she's imparted on each and every one of us. During the past couple of years, Coralie has been the primary researcher for an American-based nutraceutical company, Precision Naturals. She was also honored with the Women in Business Impact Award from Business Cape Breton in 2015 for her positive contribution and impact on the people of our community. Coralie's the mother of Jason, her bright and handsome son, who is the light of her life. Jason was born in the spring of 2015, and Jason, by the way, loves green juice, cultured veggies, and frozen bananas. <laughs> It is incredible that just one person has instilled such positive change in our community. It is my genuine belief that Coralie Murphy is someone you just have to meet in order to understand the positive impact of her efforts on our community. She is a true inspiration to each and every one of us. It is no less than an honor to introduce you to my brilliant friend, our Journey Alive High Priestess, Miss Coralie Murphy. it up here so I have to press some buttons can everybody hear me yes welcome everybody hi welcome back I, I miss everyone I've been gone so long oh my god you're here I love this. This is getting better and better. I have a very special guest that's going to speak to you at the end of this evening. Little Miss Callie May. She's my seven-year-old niece. So she has a little tidbit to contribute. So hopefully you will not fall asleep during my talk because she probably has way more to say than I do. <laughs> so welcome, everybody. It's been a long, long time since I've seen some of your faces. And I'm very happy to see some new faces. How many people have journeyed with us before? Show of hands. Oh my gosh. This is great. So then we don't have to do anything. We're done. You guys know all the information. I'm very excited this year because we are actually doing lots of new information. So the first, this meeting today is going to be a general introduction as to what will be laid out before you over the next several weeks. So I'm very, very happy to see you here. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to see such a momentum and desire to move forward in health and healing and to come together in a supportive healing network and environment because that is the number one key to success, support. We need support. We are human beings. We're beings. So when you do this journey on your own at home, which is quite possible, um, usually the level of success is not as great as when you join a community of like-minded people moving in the same direction, wanting success for one another, and journeying into your own endeavor. If there are any questions throughout the, this talk tonight, I'll give you little glimmers of time because there's going to be a lot of information I often say in the first talk you are overwhelmed with information and underwhelmed with choice with regard to what you're going to eat over the next eight weeks <laughs> but we'll get over that it's only eight weeks right first of all I'd like to thank Ray J from crew productions for being here he has volunteered his services to be here tonight and we will probably be posting this to YouTube so for those of you that have friends that couldn't attend tonight, they can catch up with us in uh, the YouTube presentation. As well, Our Lady of Fatima, I always like to start a meeting with gratitude. 
So Our Lady of Fatima has been extremely good to us and has provided this facility and has been very easily, easy to work with. And so for that, I express deep and tremendous gratitude. So oftentimes people will say, you really want to know, you want a meal plan, you want a diet plan, you want a manual for life. You're going to be disappointed because I'm not going to give you that. The old adage, if you teach a man how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. If you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If I give you a meal plan, I'm only going to, that's only going to suffice for until the amount of time that you're going to get sick of it. You know, it might whether it be a week, 10 weeks, whatever the case may be. I can guarantee you at some point along that journey, you will abandon it. But if I give you information, if I arm you with information, that is the most powerful thing that I can give to you. That will feed you for a lifetime. Understanding your health is my main mo motivation and mission through this Life Summit series. So for those of you that will journey with us through the program, I'm going to make you a promise. I always keep my promises. I promise you that you will not be the same person in nine weeks as you are today. I promise you that if you journey with us and you listen and you actually put some of these steps into action, you are gain going to gain a level of awareness that is second to none. You will not be the same person because you cannot be the same person. You will have a perpetuating awareness that will transcend throughout your life. And there's a dark side of that, of, to that, of course, because once you're aware, you're never not aware. You'll become the cart creeper in the grocery store that's looking in everyone's cart saying, oh my god, look at the pop in that cart. <laughs> you will be hiding the block of cheese under your broccoli. <laughs> you will be that person. Trust me, it happens. And you'll be sitting in the lineup just waiting for the cashier to say, oh, you eat really healthy. And you'll be all proud. <laughs> And that's all good. Like I said, you will never sit in the seat of unawareness from this point on. And that, my friends, will change your life. I promise you it will change your life. When you elevate your vibration to different states of awareness, it's amazing the things that you will attract into your world. The people that will come into your space, whether through very good and positive experiences and some <coughs> not so positive experiences. I like to say through my life, particularly as of late, um, some of the most challenging times are little conduits into yourself. They push you out of your comfort zone. They push you to evolve. And they bring in some of the most tremendous people that you could ask for. There is nothing bad about that. I love having the microphone because all the people that come in late, I get to point you out. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you want to tell a joke? An atheist, uh, an atheist, a vegan, and a crossfitter walk through a bar. Everyone knows that that's all they want is something to drink. <laughs> you can. You have a couple hours to figure out another joke. <laughs> Good though. We're going to have some conversations this time around between the definable difference between curing and healing. Uh, we are also going to have some discussion about detoxification specifically and elimination. Some of the new areas of information will be really exciting for some of the people that have been with us before. And we are coming true with some of the promises that we made. For example, we talked about coffee enemas. Oh boy. <laughs> They're coming. They're going to come. We're going to talk about the, these things. We're like, OK, this is not cool. This is so not cool right now. <laughs> if you're still here after the next five minutes, then you're good to go. <laughs> so when we look at the difference between curing and healing, curing is basically the business of the conventional medical model. And I'm sorry if I insult anybody by saying that, but that is basically what it boils down to. When we look for cures to treat symptomology, we usually turn to pharmaceutical medication to cure conditions. 
When we look at alternative practices, alternative and, and non-conventional therapies, we look at healing. And healing is a transformative experience, and it happens on many levels. It encompasses both consciousness and matter. Matter being the very physical essence of who we are, and consciousness being the vibrational element which creates the vast network which we are all connected and unified. So healing is a very transformative experience and has to be done on a physical level, an emotional level, and a spiritual level. Through this program, we are going to focus on the very matter of our existence. Through food, detoxification, the introduction of different techniques, the breathing, all of those things are a very physical component of what makes us, us. So that's kind of where our focus is going to be. However, we will be delving into some spaces into the emotional and spiritual self. It is a non-denominational approach because we know through quantum physics, the quanta, that we are all of a certain vibration. So what, whether you believe in Buddha or Allah, or Christ, God, whatever your thing is, you are here by essence of vibration. And there is a unifying body of energy that connects every single one of us here tonight. And that is amazing. So my question to you before we start is, are you interested in transforming your life? Or do you simply just want to move around the furniture? What does that mean? Are you interested in just losing 10 pounds? Or do you want to make some quantum level leaps into a journey into self-discovery, deep intrinsic healing, and of course, you will lose weight. <laughs> How many people are here to lose weight? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty is a gateway to higher vibration, by the way. Nobody. OK, perfect. Everybody's here for the right reasons. <laughs> Note to self, we have a group of liars. <laughs> but that's OK, because at the end of nine weeks, you'll all be truth seekers. I guarantee you that. So like I said, are you here to experience a transformative experience? Because I tell you, sometimes it's just a word, a phrase, a statement a meeting, a group of people that can transcend your life, that can actually elevate you to a completely different vibration to make radical change in your world. How exciting is that? Because when you get it, you get it. There's at some point the light goes on, even for the men in here. <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't want to insult anybody too soon. That's the virtue of having the microphone. It's a great thing. I'm getting dirty looks from him. <laughs> no, it's all good. So healing is by virtue an experience that requires innate body intelligence. Innate, meaning you, are already, you, are, you already have it. You were already born with this. We know this. Free will. How many of us get to exercise free will on a daily basis? Or do you feel like you're shackled in the confines of life, the routine of life, your work environment, the, your family structure, whatever that may be? There's a free will component in every single aspect of those worlds. It's a matter of exploring it or having the activation energy to realize you can explore it. And then there is body intuition, divine intuition the intuition that you were born with. These are some of the things and some of the areas that we've kind of put aside because we are in the process of conditioning. We have been conditioned into certain life patterns through family traditions or societal norms. This, my friends, is hopefully the beginning of a transformative experience. This is the process of awakening, awakening to a new body, awakening to a, a new way of existing in the world that you are in, a new way of thinking, a new way of being. Any questions?
No, no one left yet? Lock the doors, because the good <laughs> stuff is coming. So I heard this quote, I was listening to, uh, because as Shelley said, I didn't recognize that woman in the introduction, by the way. <laughs> but I was listening to Mel Robbins. I don't know if any of you know who Mel Robbins is. And she said, when scientists came together, they actually, I don't know who does this stuff, but they actually crunched the numbers. And the chances of you being born to the parents that you were born to, having the DNA structure that you have, and being born on the day that you were born is one in 400 trillion. Imagine, would you buy a lottery ticket if your chances were one in 400 trillion? You are a miracle by design. That is how uniquely special every single person in this room is. And I see some young faces that I love in the back and the front. This is an experience for all life stages. It's never too late to start, and it's never too early to start. When you look at faith and fear, faith and fear have one thing, one big thing in common, unknown. It's the unknown. And most of the decisions that we make in our world today are based on fear. We are scared. We make a decision because we're scared of the repercussions of not making the decision. We don't take the chance because we might have to push ourselves outside our comfort zone. <coughs> Embrace the vulnerability because that's where you face your greatest self. So when why waste your time on fear, the unknown entity of fear, when you can explore the avenue of faith, of developing that intuition, that in that embracing that free will, applying that innate intelligence that moves you forward. Belief, having a faith, and the biggest faith that every single one of you require to be here is the faith in your body's ability to move past the challenges that it's faced with at this very moment. Have faith in your ability to be yourself. Okay, we won't have to go through that information. <laughs> Just one sec. I probably finished it anyway. Ray J said this wind in the back was a really good effect for me, but I'm not so sure. So we often talk about surviving and thriving as well. What is the difference? Most of us, by the time we get up in the morning, eat our breakfast of coffee, going through a Tim Hortons drive-thru, getting a genetically modified bagel, drop our kids off, go to work, we don't have time for lunch, we slam down something really quick while we're standing. I had a patient come in to me once and said, I'm, I'm so busy, Corley, that I actually, when I sit on the toilet, I have to eat my lunch. <laughs> while I'm sitting on the toilet. What is wrong with that picture? <laughs> and I know some of you are laughing thinking, I do the exact same thing. <laughs> How many of you check your messages while you're having a pee? This is the insanity of where we are. We are so busy and so checked out that we don't have time. We don't have time to think about what we need or where the next meal is coming or prepare a meal. And I'm going to tell you right now, health is not convenient. There is nothing convenient about being healthy. Health is work. Health is work. You have to actually go to your kitchen, you know, the, the foreign thing they paid probably $30,000 to install, and prepare some food. Throw out the micrograve <laughs> and do some conventional cooking. You know? How's that for thought? So we are simply in this perpetual motion of surviving the insults of our choices. We don't know what it's like to thrive in the body of wellness. When you look at the people in your world, think of the top five people that surround you. Think about the relationships. Are they of toxic matter or do they support you? Do they bring you down? Are they heavy or do they elevate you? <coughs> These are some of the things that we need to put some real thought into. When you elevate your vibration, people 
don't get you anymore. When you change your food, food is like, oh, food is dreamy. Everything, everything on the planet is around food. Someone dies, we eat. Someone's born, we eat. Our marriages end, oh, we're eating then. <laughs> right? So we eat for every single occasion, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. We become addicted to that form of emotional sabotaging. Because instead of dealing with our issues, we're distracted. We want to be distracted. We want people and things and food to pull us away from the real issues at hand. So through this experience, I want to welcome you to what it's like to thrive in your body, to thrive in your world, and thrive in the relationships that you hold near and dear. Because that's where transformation happens. So when we look at the process of healing, healing is innate. Your body, and I know that we have some cancer patients here tonight. Uh, we've received a lot of emails with regard to some of the participants and asking some questions. I know that we have a whole docket of people that have gastrointestinal distress, Crohn's, colitis, you name it, they have it. I know that we have some cancer patients here tonight. I know that we have some well seekers here tonight that just want to get that little bit extra in their world. We have some major hormonal issues here, both men and women because we are living in an estrogenic society with gender-bending qualities, which we will talk about. Our world is full of endocrine disrupt disruptors, which we will talk about. So I know that we have a plethora of different conditions. And this is where, and of course all the autoimmune diseases, um, but this is where, this is, healing is nonspecific. Your body doesn't say, okay, you're diabetic, so we'll heal you with the diabetes, but you're going to keep your thyroid condition. It doesn't work like that. Your body doesn't know anything but healing. Your body has a natural momentum and propensity to want to heal. The only thing that gets in the way is you. And you know, everything we want is really simple. It's actually really simple. We know exactly what we want. We know exactly how to get what we want, but what happens? It's not easy because we have food addictions, because we have commitments, because we have a value inversion syndrome where we prioritize the things that, acquire, that help us to acquire stuff and we don't focus on the things that will give you healing and health and good formative relationships. Those things are all really worth thinking about and need to be thought about as you go through this process. So if it is your body's natural momentum to heal and you are in the way, then it's time to get real, right? But to do that, you're going to have to break away from conventional thought patterns because the information that you are going to hear over the next eight to nine weeks are going to be non-conventional, alternative, and sometimes difficult to hear. For example, when we talk about disease, there is good research that unveils the thought that 5% of all the diseases that we see are from birth. They are genetic, and that's a really hard thing to hear because we <coughs> like to be the victim of circumstance. We like to be the victim of our genetic profile. So if 5% are from birth, and unfortunately this does encompass many children, that the body couldn't rectify those genetic sequences before the onset of birth, that means 95% of the diseases that we see in our culture today, whether it be diabetes, autoimmune condi conditions, uh, cancer, this is a difficult one to hear, are due to choice choice. The choices that you've made, the thoughts that you are thinking, and the people that you hold near and dear in your internal sphere. That's a very difficult thing to, to hear. So the first part of being here and moving forward in your journey is to sit with an open mind because you just never know when the light bulb will go off. So we often go through the biological hierarchy. 
Everyone's like, okay, here she goes again. The quintessential part of every single one of us here tonight is energy. We know this. This is actually scientifically proven now. Okay? So the quintessential part of every single one of us here today, regardless of age, ethnicity, gender, thought, belief, is energy. We are a vibrating entity. When, as energy organizes itself, it forms atoms. Atoms form molecules. Molecules come together to form cells. Cells come together to form tissues. Tissues come together to form organs. The organ systems come together to form the organism. That would be us. Right? So when you think about that, you think about that biological hierarchy of our physical matter, what does that tell us? It tells us that every single thing is derived from energy. The thing that you can't see. So, every single thing that you put into your mind and every single thing that you put into your mouth carries a consequence. You will have a biological and physiological response to that. The life that you are living and the body that you're in is the physical, emotional, and spiritual manifestation of the choices that you have made thus far. Okay, everybody wake up. <laughs> Kelly Mae, how are you doing? You're good? Hang in there, kiddo. You're doing really well. So this brings us to the whole new science, a new frontier known as epigenetics. Epigenetics, Bruce Lipton, for those of you that want to do more research into this, Br Dr. Bruce Lipton is a molecular biologist. He talks about this beautifully, and he is so charismatic. I had an opportunity to actually meet him in Toronto, and we had to talk about, yes, molecular biology. <laughs> that was cool. So basically what he is saying, which kind of goes back to the thought that only 5% is disease by genetic manifestation and 95% by choice, is that the cell is a function, or your genetic expression is the function of the environment of which that cell is sitting in. So the cellular environment is hormonally influenced, electrically charged, nutritively affected, so what you're bringing in with regard to nutrients. So all of those things matter. They all matter. So if you're sitting here and you're thinking, okay, well, my mom had breast cancer, so you know the chance of me having breast cancer are pretty good, divorce the thought. It's what you're bringing into your life that's going to upregulate or express that gene pattern. If you're sitting here and you say, well, my father died of a heart attack and his father had heart condition, divorce the thought. Because what's more genetic or what's more prevailing, your gene sequence or the fact that you have been given or handed down a lifestyle that has been through generations, perpetuating the same results, <laughs> upregulating the same gene expression. So I challenge you to let that concept enter you, enter your mindset, because you don't have to be a victim of the genetic sequence, what you've been genetically predisposed to, you can divorce it. You can divorce it. So, this brings me to my thoughts and feelings about disease. I truly believe, without exception, that every single disease is a manifestation of toxicity and deficiency. And it does not matter if that disease is manifested as, like I said, cancer, an autoimmune condition, diabetes, Ooh. Okay, we're leaving it go. So energy telling me to let it go. <laughs> so toxicity and deficiency, because when you are toxic, your body cannot function well. It is a biological and physiological impossibility to live out a balanced homeostatic existence when your body is full of toxic residues or toxicity. And we're going to explore a little bit of that tonight. So, 
we have toxicity, and with toxicity comes deficiency. Charlotte Gerson, as she so beautifully stated, you can't get two cars into the same parking spot. So if your tissue is full of toxic matter, you can't upload the nutrients. So you have to flush out the toxins to upload the nutrients. Seems easy. It's easy in thought. But can you do it when the chocolate bar is calling your name in the middle of the night? <laughs> when you're hiding in the closet saying, if nobody sees me, I really didn't need it. <laughs> oh, I've been there. We've all been there. So, the liver. We are going to explore specifically the liver in this Life Summit series in a, in a way that we haven't explored it in the past. The liver is key to this paradigm. It's a key factor because in alternative health, we say you're only ever as old as your liver. You're only ever as healthy as your liver. Your blood supply circulates throughout your liver once every three minutes. So let's think about that. Those liters that you have of blood circulating throughout your system, that's going through your liver once every three minutes. It's amazing. Your liver is an amazing organ. And it shows through research that the majority of people are functioning in today's world at a capacity of a liver capacity of 40 to 50 percent. Wow. And if you want your innate healing mechanism to be activated to get you through a disease or a state of, of imbalance or dysfunction, you need a liver function at at least 80%. So we are about halfway there. So what do we do? We have to decongest the liver, which we will talk about, because that's where our coffee enemas come into play. How fun is that? <laughs> I'm, like I said in the email, I'm just going to go for it this year. I've been promising these things, and we've never gone there. I have my metal enema bucket, I have all the piping, I have the catheters, and we're going to show you. So all we need is a volunteer. <laughs> we prefer male, because us women like to torture you. But we'll take anybody. We we'll might skip out some parts of that demonstration. But for those of you, I know we laugh at this, but I'm telling you that the majority of people are constipated. If you have one bowel movement a day, you're constipated. So imagine the people that are having one bowel movement a week. The average transit time today is between 36 and 72 hours. It should be 18, which means by the time you eat your food, it's exiting in 18 hours. Unfortunately, today, when we eat our food, it might not even come out. <laughs> or it might come out, you know, some couple days later. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so we're going, we have some great ideas. We have some great things. We don't usually recommend that you purchase any specific products. We try to do as much with food as we possibly can, but there is one product and I'm going to say this now because when you order it or people start ordering it, there's not going to be any left. So get it quick if you plan on doing this. It's not the enema bucket, by the way. <laughs> um, it's called Oxy Powder. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Oxy Powder, O X Y P O W D E R. You can get it online, unfortunately. It's not available here, but you can get it online through upayanaturals.com or the Global Healing Center. Unfortunately, that is a site that you have to order in the States, but Upaya is actually a Canadian-based company out of Ontario, and they do carry that one specific product. Okay, and we're going to talk about why that's important. So, disease is basically when the body's compensatory mechanisms are slower than the, co the progression of the disease pattern. Okay, do we get that? So when your dis-ease, or state of dis-ease, imbalance, is moving faster than your body's compensatory mechanisms. 
then you will see the pattern and the symptomology of whatever dis-ease you are expressing. So while all we have to do is shuttle the compensatory mechanisms to get ahead of the disease process. Sounds easy, right? But it's that commitment thing. It's that consistent th consistency thing. It's ourselves that we have to get ahead of. So what are toxins? We're going to start here. Toxins are, in my opinion, my personal definition of a toxin, is anything that distracts or takes away from the homeostatic balance that you have or that you are given or that your body's constantly, perpetually trying to stay within the parameters of. So anything that takes away from that essence, that vitality of who you are. Okay? There are two classifications of toxins. You have endogenous toxins and exogenous toxins. Endogenous toxins are toxins that are manifested or created within the body. So for example, viruses, bacteria, mycoplasms, fungi, we know these things, right? Bacterial infections, viral infections. How many people have had a cold or a flu in the last month? These little critters are really cute because they rob you of all your vital nutrients and they excrete their fecal matter, their toxic matter, in your system. So you're like a toilet, <laughs> basically. How cool is that? Right? So that creates a metabolic toxic waste that the body then has to shuttle out of the body. Sounds easy, but it's not so easy and we'll explain why. <coughs> Exogenous toxins are toxins that we experience that come from outside the body. There's a whole slew of these. Pesticides, insecticides, larvicides, <laughs> fungicides. GMOs and glyphosate, which we'll have a specific conversation about. Geopathic stress patterns. Chemtrails. I said the conspiratory word, chemtrails. Wow. <laughs> chemtrails. EMF, electromagnetic frequency disruption. Cell phones. How many people in here do not have a cell phone? Oh my god! Really? Good for you! Yeah, he has mine. <laughs> <laughs> Cell phones, these things, Wi-Fi. How many businesses, how, how many buildings do you work in that have no Wi-Fi? You know, we are bombarded by these energetic disruptions, endocrine disruptions, you know? We live, like I said, in a world bathed in xenoestrogens. Men are becoming women. Well, not really, but. But we have, they have gender bending qualities. So you look at the bisphenol A, the phthalates, the perchlorates, the fire retardants, in your mattress, in your, in your carpets, in your clothing, in toys. All these places that we don't even give a second thought to. And then women. We wear underwire bras. And now you see young girls, what do they do with their cell phone? They shove it in their bra. What do you think that wire is conducting? It's conducting electromagnetic frequency into the breast tissue. These are things that we have to think about. IUDs, copper. How many people sit with a laptop on their lap when they have an IUD? Or their cell phone in their back pocket and they have an IUD. That transference of electromagnetic frequency is affecting the very essence of who you are. It's affecting your biology on every single level. Things that we need to think about. As I always say in every meeting, in introductory meeting, there's over 80,000 industrial chemicals used today. And the National Research Council of Canada has no toxicity data on 80% of those. So that's 64,000 chemicals that has no research. And they have never been tested in combination. 
So how many times have you read a label and you've only seen one chemical on the ingredient list? Not very often. The word fragrance alone is a mask word for hundreds of chemicals that come together to form the proprietary fragrance so they don't have to list them. We are bombarded by chemicals every single day. These are exogenous, toxic factors that we have to deal with, that our bodies have to deal with. So, 70% of the food on your grocery store shelf contain at least one genetically modified ingredient. And for those of you that have not explored yet the word of world of genetically modified organisms, we're going to do that in this journey because that, my friends, is an extremely important conversation because it directly affects the microbiome of the gut, which houses the 80% of your immune of your immune function or immune system. Quite important. And there are over 3,000 different food additives in the food supply today. So on an average day, your body is dealing with a dump truck full of electromagnetic frequency, chemicals, and endocrine disruptors. And then we wonder why we're sick. It's not that hard. In my opinion, when I, you know, it's funny, I've been eating this way for a decade. Um, and every time I go into the grocery store, if I have to pick up like garbage bags or toilet paper, I have to kind of venture outside fruits and vegetables and the natural food section. And I'm like, I'm lost. I'm like, I'm like, seriously, I have to read, okay, garbage bags, kitty litter, whatever, and you go down that aisle. It's amazing because when I, s and then I start to see all the little boxes, Oreo cookies and fudgios and snackaroos and dunkaroos or whatever they are. It's like, they're like little chemistry projects in a box. We don't even know half the words on the, on the ingredient list. We don't even know what they are. But we, and they put them so small that you can't even read it. You have to bring you like your inspector gadget magnifying glass. Yes, I'm revealing my age. <laughs> and yes, I had a baby at 42. <laughs> and yes, that's not cool. <laughs> I know all about hormonal imbalances, like straight up. So they put these little tiny labels so that you won't read them. You don't have the time to sit there and read them. But, but the, the answer, the very simple solution to that problem is you just don't buy it. If it comes in a box and it's processed, you're just going to walk away. Back away from the Oreos. <laughs> right, Callie Mae? We question Callie Mae every day when she comes home. What did you eat today? <sighs> We've, she's mastered the art of lying. <laughs> We're bringing her back into the realm of truism, saying it's not about perfection, it's about consistency, as she will tell you at the end of today. So in that, because we've been gorging on all these chemi chemistry projects, as I like to call them, we have now developed a taste for chemicals. We are eating with a chemical tongue. We don't even know what real food tastes like anymore. The O. Henry bar is so delicious and sweet that a carrot seems bitter. Well, at the end of the eight weeks, your carrot's going to be like the candy bar, and the candy bar is going to be like a foreign object. <laughs> yeah, right, she says. <laughs> <laughs> your taste buds will change. And that's a really important thing to understand because when you begin this venture, if you, whatever level you decide to commit to. You know, some of you here today, as soon as I start talking about coffee, I'm going to lose half of you. I, well, <laughs> who am I kidding? 75% of you right away. So this is not a you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to. This is a, a, a program that's going to say, if you choose this, if you choose this, if you choose this, this is what will happen. Or this is how your body's going to respond. And guess what? You get to be the determining factor. You can't blame me, you only blame you. And your level of commitment will reflect 
in your result pattern. I promise you that. Okay? So, this moves us into the elimination routes for the body. So we went through all the toxins, endogenous and exogenous toxins. We know we're being bombarded by everything and everyone on the planet. How do we get rid of it? Women, you have five excretory mechanisms. You have five routes out of the body. Men, you only have four, so you're trapped by design. <laughs> so women, and I'll let you guys guess which one you can eliminate for the men. You have urination. You have defecation. You have respiration. You have perspiration. And you have menstruation. Yes, boys, that's the one you can eliminate. <laughs> unless there's something I don't know. <laughs> but if you look at our pattern today, urination. How many people, if you have your weight in pounds, drink half your body weight in ounces every day? Very few. So right away, your urinary route is compromised. Defecation, that means pooping. This is the fun one. We have such poor GI health, and we have such a state of dysbiosis contained within the microbiome that we have toxic matter being retained because we are not defecating enough. Okay, like I said, the average transit time should be about 18 hours, and unfortunately today, we're looking at 36, 24, 36 hours. 36, 72 hours. Sometimes it's seven days for some people. Okay? That is huge. So when that fecal matter sits in the colon, what you will get is a reuptake of the toxins that your body are trying to eliminate. You will reabsorb the toxic matter from the bowel contents in back into the system. Respiration. How many people sit there and do these beautiful deep breaths? Not many. It's like, <laughs> that's it, shallow. We're sitting all day. We're not, we don't even think about breathing. It's one of those things that we don't even think about. So we're not breathing enough. We're not getting those deep breaths. Perspiration. That means exercise. That means movement. If you are not moving and you are not perspiring, then you are retaining. And then we have menstruation. Now, menstruation is unique to every single woman in here because of contraceptive use. What's your mode of birth control? And then all the endocrine disruption, disruptors that we have and how that's being or affecting our hormonal balance. And then we have menopause, psychopause. <laughs> okay? So boys, you don't have to worry about this unless you're married. <laughs> and then it becomes a major issue. Major issue. So. Like I said, if you are not, if any of those exc excretion routes are blocked or eliminatory processes are compromised, you are retaining toxic matter. And the body can't have this floating around in the bloodstream. The biochemistry of the blood is extremely delicate. We have these allowable limits, and you'll know that if you go to your doctor, oh, your blood work for this is, has to be between this and this, you need a medication. Forget. Oh, you need a diet, and you need to move, and you need to perspire, and you need to breathe. It's easier to take a pill for every ill. Right? So, what do we do with the toxins? We move them into our fat tissue. Fat is biochemically neutral. It's a sweet spot for toxic upload. So it all gets pushed into those fat cells. And when it comes out, it's not pretty because you'll be cranky and you'll be sick, but it's worth it because it's minor compared to the longevity of what that will mean, okay? So we are going to develop, or we have put together in this session, a multifaceted approach to address specifically all those modes of elimination. So like I said, 
urination. What are we going to do? We're going to drink more water. And we're going to add Himalayan salt or Celtic sea salt to the water so that we can upload it into the cells easier. We can break the surface tension of the water. It is extremely important for those that are on fluoridated sy systems to be extremely mindful. All the halogen or halide family, whether it's chlorine, chloride, bromine, bromide, fluoride, are all toxic chemicals to the glandular system. So if you are on a fluoridated water system, you need to be drinking someone else's spring water. If you are bathing in fluoride, your absorption is nine times more through the skin than if you ingest it. There are things that we can do about this, but it takes a community to do that. It's a community endeavor to move fluoride out of our water systems. We won't go there. <laughs> so, defecation. How are we going to eliminate? How are we gonna, going to get those bowel movements? We are going to do scrubbing bubbles. Because every time I think of OxyPad or I think of that, that little commercial where they go, there's this little scrubber that comes down and the bubbles are everywhere. So I always call OxyPad or scrubbing bubbles. And what OxyPad or basically is, it's a monatomic oxygen compound. So oxygen usually in nature is a diatomic molecule. It is a minus two charge. When you reduce that to a monatomic form, it will carry a minus one charge. Most toxins in your body are positively charged. So we know that opposites attract, right? So positive will glom, or the negative will glom onto the positive. And then through an oxidation reduction reaction, it's going to liquefy the impacted fecal matter through the large intestine and your bowel, liquefy it, and you, it leaves the body. It's not pleasant. It's liquid. You'll be, you have a lot of gas, <laughs> a lot of flatulence. But we'll only, we're, we're planning to do this for one week. So for those of you that are interested in doing this part of the journey, we are going to do this for one week. Could okay? We show up at the same time. We should, and we're going to move our meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say how the scrubble, scrubbing bubble's working for you today. <laughs> <laughs> now, most of what you will experience on the exit route is going to be in the morning, so it doesn't really interfere with your work, okay? So, but it might be nice to do the first couple days when you have a couple days off, just so that your body, you're going to know how that's going to work out for you, okay? And we will have a full discussion about this when we introduce it, but that is one product that if you're interested, you may want to get now in preparation for that. Now, Oxy Powder is unique and different from other colon cleansers in that it actually scrubs out the small intestine as well, which other colon cleansers will not do. And you have 30 feet of GI tract here, so we're talking about a lot of cleaning. If you were to open up the GI tract, it would, the surface area alone would cover a tennis court. That's how much absor absorption you have. That's the power of your system. That's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. So scrubbing bubbles, right? And then we're going to gently move you into the coffee enema to decongest your liver. Now, you don't have to do any of this. I'm introducing it because we're going full bore this year, OK? Perspiration. Well, guess what? You have to move. You actually have to work up a sweat. And then you'll probably have to take a shower in your fluoridated water, <laughs> okay? Or soak in your bromide-infested hot tub. <laughs> one, of those, one of those things will work. Respiration. We are going to do sessions on breathing and the importance of breathing. And it's not just, oh, so we can get more oxygen. Do we understand oxygen alone? The atmospheric saturation for oxygen used to be about 27 to 28%. We're down to 9% in some areas. We don't have the oxygen available in the atmosphere that we used to. We're cutting down all our trees. We don't want plant, we can't take care of our children. We don't want to take care of plants in the house, right? So all of these things matter. 
Vegetables carry oxygen. We wouldn't want to eat kale, right? So this is all, these are all different considerations that we have to really start opening our minds to to develop healthy patterns, healthy matter, physical matter. So breathing. Now, when you eat, for example, how many people eat standing up, checking their messages, at work, driving a car, talking on the cell phone, talking on your landline, watching TV. watching TV. This is all sympathetic mode. So in your autonomic nervous system, you have your sympathetic mode and your parasympathetic mode. Your sympathetic mode is what we call your flight or fight mode. You don't heal, you don't digest, and you don't rest in that in sympathetic mode. So in order for you to transfer from a sympathetic nervous system mode into a parasympathetic nervous system mode, it requires slowing down, being asleep, just as most of you are right now. <laughs> Welcome to the parasympathetic trance. The easiest way to move yourself into a parasympathetic mode is by taking nine deep breaths. <coughs> you can take 10, but research indicates nine. You take nine deep breaths, it is the quickest way to move yourself into parasympathetic mode. When you eat, you need to sit down. When you eat, you need to unplug. Your body needs to digest, and it cannot digest if it's being constantly stimulated. I cannot tell you the importance of that. Okay, menstruation. What am I gonna do about that for you? We are going to hopefully, through some dietary and lifestyle changes, rectify or bring your hormonal balance into homeostasis. Contraceptive choice is squarely on your shoulders. But understand that when you're getting the needle and you're missing a, you know, periods for a year, you have an IUD and you're missing periods for a year, you are maintaining toxicity. So that, or you could just not have sex. <laughs> that always works. Works for me. <laughs> so all those things are really important, okay? So contraceptive choice and trying to move our hormonal imbalances back into alignment and homeostasis will help you with menstruation, okay? So now we're gonna talk about the microbiome. We're almost there. We're gonna talk about the microbiome. This is going to, we're going to try to hit this area pretty heavily this year because the microbiome is so important. So important that most people in alternative practices believe that disease manifests or begins in the gut. The gut, meaning the entire GI system, whether it be the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, colon. And if you look at it, it is one cell thick. It's one cell thick. It is a very fragile environment. But it is the good bacteria in balance with the pathogenic bacteria that give the microbiome its health signature. Okay? And we will talk about conditions of dysbiosis, candidiasis, and things of that nature. It is extremely important that we address the microbiome. In fetal development, the tissue that creates the central nervous system is the same tissue that creates the enteric nervous system. What does that mean? The tissue of the brain and the tissue the, of the gut are made of the same stuff in fetal development. It is known as our second brain. It houses neurons, 100 million neurons in the gut. That's, a, that's extraordinary. That's more neurons than the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system. Okay? Disease manifests in the gut. If you look at when you eat something, it actually doesn't enter in the, into the body until it passes the GI barrier and gets into the blood. So the entire GI, it's a hollow tube from here to there. Mouth to anus, hollow tube and it's all considered outside the body. 
So it is not inside the body until it passes through the GI barrier and gets into the bloodstream. And the gut has tight junctions formed so tightly, just like the blood-brain barrier. Those of you that have had an experience of chemotherapy know this because they need to make chemotherapeutic agents for brain cancers that will pass the blood-brain barrier because those desmosomes are so tightly joined. The gut is the exact same. We have these tight junctions, but unfortunately, due to the lifestyles that we have today, we blow holes right through that system every day. And we have macromolecules going from the GI system into the blood system. And then we mount an immune response to them because it's, it's treated like an antigen. And then we go through a process of molecular mimicry, and then we have things attacking other tissues in the body. The thyroid gland, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, all of those things are autoimmune reactions that stem from a gut dysbiosis and a microbiome deficiency. Okay? Sound exciting yet? <laughs> and those two systems, the gut and the brain, they're connected by the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the 10th cranial nerve that goes from the brain stem to the gut, to the GI system, or to the viscera in general because it's a wandering nerve. It has many, many stop points. And 90% of the fibers from the vagus nerve carry information from the gut to the brain, not from the brain to the gut. Now that should be amazing because if you suffer from, from depression, anxiety, any of those mood or behavioral, autism, you have gut issues. You have gut issues. So we have to get down. 95% of the serotonin that you manufacture in your body, which is one of your feel-good hormones, is manufactured in the gut. So then you people have SSRI drugs on board or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors on board. <laughs> and what does it do? It creates gastrointestinal disorders. Is there any wonder? Because they're so, they're so intimately connected. So these are some of the things that we have to think about and explore as we go through this journey. How are we? We good? Okay. So now we're going to get down to some, what, they're just like, what can I have and what can I, do I have to leave out? Okay. So through the, the next few weeks, we are going to have, we'll revisit some topics because they're very important. For example, we're going to have a discussion on the difference between macro and micronutrients. Macronutrients are your fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Very important, but when you eat macronutrients, you're eating for today. You're eating for the existence today. Micronutrients are vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals, phytochemicals being things like antioxidants. When you eat for micronutrient value, you're eating for longevity. You're eating for health. You're eating for your future. How many diet schemes are wrapped around high protein, high fat, low carbohydrate, High carbohydrate. Do you ever hear, this is a high vitamin diet? <laughs> or we're going to boost your phytochemical content. No, because it might work forever. And then they don't make money off of you. If you want to lose weight, you can do that. Put yourself in a state of ketogenesis. It'll happen in 36 hours. You'll drop weight like that. Do a water fast, gone. But that's not going to be sustainable. So if you want to regulate and have consistent weight patterns, consistent hormone patterns, consistent life patterns, then you have to sign up for life. It's about consistency, not about perfection. And I don't see moderation because moderation for one person, having five cups of coffee a day, might be different than the person having one cup of coffee a day. So it's consistency. <coughs> we have to divorce the word moderation. It's too subjective, okay? So, when we look at water, again, water, the solution to pollution is dilution. We are 80% water. The plants are 80% water. Living entities carry a high water content. I, I said to a friend of mine, I put him on a health protocol the other day, and I said, even though you are exceptional, you are, not accept you are not an exception to the rule. So you need to do this. You need to drink water. 
break the surface tension, put a little bit of salt in it, have it av available for your cells. Okay? So, if you are, and I'm going to say this again, if you're on a fluoridated water system, figure out a way to get different water. It is that important. We are going to talk about iodine. Iodine is one of the top three deficiencies in our culture today. Magnesium, vitamin D, and iodine. Thyroid conditions are rampant. How many people in here have or know someone with a thyroid condition? Yeah. Thyroid conditions, I'm telling you, I've been sitting in my office over the last two years and I cannot tell you. It is getting younger and younger and it's just like multiplying but in droves. It's incredible. And that, I believe, is because of the endocrine disruptions that we have on board and fluoride and chlorine and bromide. Those things are really, really important. Iodine, nascent iodine, for those of you that want to supplement, because you're not going to get this in your food, you, because we're not eating sea vegetables, we're not eating the amount of fish that we need to eat, good fish. You're like, oh my God, she, we can eat fish now? <laughs> no. <laughs> but for those of you that want it, sure. But are you going to get enough iodine from that to satisfy the requirement for the body? The thyroid gland alone, thyroxin, triiodothyronine, T3 and T4, are named after how many iodine molecules? T3 has three iodine molecules, T4 has four. T3 is the inactive form, T or is the active form that has to be converted from T4. Guess what? 80% of that conversion from T4 to T3 is in the liver. That most of us are functioning at 40 to 50%. 20%, the remaining 20%, is converted in the kidney. Hmm. So then if you go and you get a thyroid panel done at your doctor, they've taken T3 off the list. They've taken the active form of your thyroid hormone off the blood list. I'm like, where did the T3 go? They test TSH, which is not even secreted by your thyroid gland. It's secreted by your pituitary gland. They'll test for T4, and you have to ask for thyroid antibody, and you have to ask for T3 and T2 and reverse T3 and reverse T4. So when you have a thyroid panel done, most of you are only going to have TSH and T4, and I can guarantee you that if you are symptomatic of a thyroid condition, it will not show up without further investigation. Okay? The breast tissue are sponges for iodine. The prostate needs iodine. The uterus needs iodine. Your thyroid gland needs iodine. Your endocrine system needs iodine. It is extremely important, and we are going to explore that in further detail within the meetings coming up. So, oh, and by the way, estrogen inhibits iodine uptake, and we're living in a world of xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens are foreign estrogens coming from outside to inside. Imagine, we are deficient. Okay, so we are also this year going to look at natural cyclical patterns of the body. There are three. They run in eight-hour spans. So we are going to pay homage to some of these different topics this year. So from 4 a.m. in the morning until 12 p.m. in the afternoon, you are in the elimination cycle. Okay, so when you wake up and you have bad breath, dragon breath, so bad that you've decided to sleep in another bed and your husband or your wife are like far away in another room. <laughs> and you have a headache or you start your urination and defecation pattern. They are eliminatory processes. <coughs> your body's trying to eliminate between 4 a.m. and 12 p.m. From 12 p.m. And, and 8 p.m., so 12 in the afternoon till 8 at night, you're going through what we call the assimilation cycle. 
And the assimilation cycle is where you get to eat and your body takes in a bunch of nutrients. It's like, okay, I'm a scavenger now. Give me some, give me some love, give me some love, give me some food, give me some nutrients, <coughs> give me some vitamins, give me some minerals, give me some phytochemicals. So we can assimilate it into the body. From 8 p.m., so 8 in the evening until 4 a.m., your body's going through an appropriation cycle or a healing cycle. So if you don't get to bed by 9 or 10 o'clock at night, you have hampered your appropriation cycle tremendously. When you have a cortisol spike between like 11 and 2, you're hitting that, you're like going to be awake for a little while at that point. And today it's like, well, I go to bed at midnight. Midnight seems to be like the magic number because by the time we get everything done, we look at the clock and it's like witching hour, right? It's like a goal to get to bed by 12. We're only three hours behind. So we're, gonna, we're going to look at that in this program. And a lot of what we're going to recommend this cycle is going to be or reflect how the body works and fluctuates within those parameters which is new. Okay, so let's talk about some food. What can I have? Just tell me, what can I eat? Nothing. <laughs> you must have figured that one out by now. <laughs> so we're looking at, this is not a vegan diet. I am not trying to push veganism on anybody. This is about healing. This is a, a, a journey into the self. This is about discovering new terrain. This is about honoring yourselves, right? This is about pushing you outside the comfort zone. And whether you want to hear it or not, the healthiest people on the planet eat high vibrational foods, seasonal food for the most part, in the form of fruits, vegetables, fresh pressed juices, organic, beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, and a little bit of grain. So that's what you're going to eat. <laughs> Fruits and vegetables, all of them, all of them. And in honor, and when we honor the elimination cycle, we're going to really boost fruit in the morning because fruit has lots of minerals and lots of water. It's very quickly digested. It's easy on the system. So we're going to have some ideas about that. Okay? Transitional foods are foods that if you are a meat and potatoes kind of gal or guy, and that's all you've ever eaten for supper for like a bazillion years, you're going to need a little bit of help. <laughs> so we're going to give you some transitional foods. So if you want to eat some of the gluten-contained grains, kamut and spelt, that's available to you. This is all about entering at a place you're where your comfort system lies. So if, for example, you're like, I'm not going to live on fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, I'm not going to live like a bird for eight weeks, forget that, not doing it, <laughs> not going back, done. Then that's your choice. One change in the right direction is a change that you didn't make prior to tonight. So if it's just about drinking more water or getting to bed earlier, or redefining your term of moderation, that's all good. That is all good. I am giving you the full gamut, and you get to pick. I'm teaching you how to fish for carrots. <laughs> I'm giving you the full gamut, and you get to be the decision maker. You get to pick what entry level you, where you want to start. And I can guarantee you there's going to be a lot of information. So people have to do this program like three, four, five, six times before they're like, okay, okay, now I get the coffee enema. <laughs> so four years now, you'll be ready. <laughs> so it depends on you. It's a personal choice. I'm just giving you the, the protocol, okay? And you can do anything for eight weeks. You could even starve for eight weeks. Your body just feeds on the dead cells. It's all good. <laughs> you'll go into ketosis and you'll lose tons of weight. It's a win-win. And it's free, so you don't even lose there. <laughs> so you get to pick. You absolutely get to choose. So with regard to grains, I like to keep them to a minimum. 
because I really want to bolster your phytonutrient content, the vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals, okay? So if you're going to use grain, look at quinoa, look at organic choices. You choose long grain brown rice instead of short grain brown rice because long grain brown rice takes longer to break, da longer to break down sorry into glucose. Short grain brown rice psh, converts to sugar just like that, okay? So there's quinoa, there's brown rice tortillas, non-gluten grains, there's gluten grains. So you get to pick, okay? Nuts and seeds. For those of you with a thyroid deficiency, make sure you get Brazil nuts into your diet. They're high in selenium. The thyroid gland absolutely needs selenium for conversion of T4 to T3. Very, very important. Okay? So seeds. Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds. There's lots of seeds. You just have to explore. You're like the food adventures. I'm all into Paw Patrol now because I have a two-year-old. I never watch TV, but I know everything about Paw Patrol. <laughs> Paw Patrol can save the day, so if you need some help, they're on their way. <laughs> okay, so foods to restrict. Now here's the conversation piece. This is where I lose people. We're almost there. Let's talk about dairy. What's the problem with dairy? It's mucus forming. Very good. Up to one gallon of extra mucus is produced every time you ingest yogurt, cheese, or milk, cream, or any derivation thereof. It has casein protein, and casein protein breaks down into casomorphin, and casomorphin is a mild opiate-like structure that bathes the brain in dopamine, and the brain loves dopamine. It's a really nice feel-good hormone. It makes us happy. It makes us addicted. The cell phones, you know when every time your cell phone goes off, it creates a dopamine response? That's why you're addicted to the cell phone. Crazy. So casomorphin is a opiate-like structure, and it's one-tenth the same strength as morphine. Imagine that. One-tenth the same strength. And then we have lactose. So lactose is the milk sugar, and less than, we have less than 5% of the lactase enzyme that actually breaks down lactose, because milk is actually intended for baby cows, not baby humans. Right? And why do we choose milk from a cow? Why isn't it like, I don't know, baboon milk? Or like, it's an interesting, I find it really interesting how we make these choices, right? And then it's full of hormone residues, antibiotic residues, because our cows are bolstered up on hormones and they're shot with antibiotics. And all that residue comes in the flesh and their byproducts, the dairy. And then we have somatic cells. And somatic cells is the fancy word for pus. Okay, this always gets people. And in August of 2012, the national somatic cell count, the allowable limit in Canada, is 400,000 somatic cells per milliliter of milk. 750 million Somatic cells is the allowable limit from, in the, S, from the USDA per liter. So our allowable limit in Canada is 400,000 per milliliter. Okay? And that's a real number as of August 2012. That's the allowable limit. And in the States, the USDA says you're allowed to have 20 million live bacteria per liter. How fun is that? And then we think, okay, well, if we can't have milk, we're gonna, our bones are going to be brittle and we're going to shrivel up into a bowl of dust. Dairy is actually acid forming. So it requires alkaline mineral salts from the body to buffer the acidity from the milk. So it's going to actually leach calcium from your bones, from your teeth. So it does the opposite. And then if we have a magnesium deficiency on board, then that even further drives the calcium deficiency. 
And then if we don't have enough vitamin K2, we have calcifications in spots that it's not supposed to be, like the arteries and bony spurs, so on and so forth. So all of these vitamins and minerals work in perfect harmony. And if you want to know a really simple mantra, or really, it can be reduced down to something really simple, you just eat plants. Because Mother Nature has given you every single vitamin and mineral in perfect ratio form when you ingest plants. You don't have to figure out, you don't have to do the nutraceutical thing and like, okay, if I have calcium, I need magnesium. If I have that, I need vitamin D3. And if I need vitamin D3, I need vitamin K2. You don't have to figure it out. Mother Nature did it for you. All you have to do is do the work. That's it. All you have to do is commit to eating a plant-strong life lifestyle. Okay. Coffee. Uh, <laughs> This is a tough one, and I can appreciate that. Even though I've never, I've never actually had a cup of coffee in my life, believe it or not. That's why my energy levels are kind of like this. I don't do the <laughs> sugar, caffeine, down, sugar, caffeine, down. That's the cycle that we're on. We get the morning cup of coffee. That does us until like mid-noon, and then we're like, need the cup of coffee or need the sugar. You get the instant stimulant, and then by 3 o'clock, you're like face plant on your desk. You need the immediate pick-me-up, you're good until 6 o'clock. The children drive you crazy, you get them to bed, you're gone again. But now your favorite TV show is on. So now we need to be inundated by blue light, a, a, a disruptor, a homeostatic disruptor for the body. Oh, this is spooky. <laughs> Don't worry, I got coffee right here. <laughs> so coffee is really hurt in the adrenal glands. It takes your body two days to recover from one cup of coffee. The half-life of caffeine is six hours, so if you have a morning cup of coffee, it's still reactive in your body when you're going to bed. You're still on the coffee high. So if you have, I don't know, six cups of, or six, three cups of coffee in a day, your adrenal glands are behind six days. Why are, adrenal, why are the adrenals so important? Because they regulate stress through cortisol and adrenaline. And they feed back into the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, which affects the thyroid gland, and that affects your progesterone and your estrogen. It's all connected. It's all connected. You, can, you cannot treat in isolation. We are a systemic system in need of holis holistic medicine. You cannot take one system out of the picture and treat that one system and not have every other system affect it. And so when you suffer side effects, you're suffering the insult of taking a system in isolation and ignoring the parameters of how that's going to affect the rest of the system, the rest of the body, or the host organism. Okay, so coffee is very acidic. Coffee will lend itself to gastro, gastric reflux. How many people have issues with gastric reflux? Prevacid, Nexium, they're like, you know, it's every day in my office. And coffee, when taken orally, suppresses gallbladder function. Some of you are like, oh, I have a gallbladder, so it doesn't apply to me. <laughs> That's not good. But coffee taken rectally opens the gallbladder. I always say coffee's great, we just put it in the wrong hole. <laughs> we just have to be mindful of those little minor shifts. It's only a couple feet in the difference. Uh, are we awake yet? So then we have sugar, the ever popular sugar. We ingest, on average, 150 pounds of sugar per year, which <laughs> translates into about 22 teaspoons of refined sugar per day, per person. Sugar is very inflammatory. It interferes with the complete microbiome, because what it does, it will feed the pathogenic bacteria, which inhibits the activity of your good bacteria, and then you end up with a gut dysbiosis, so your mood is going to be affected. 
Your synthesis of certain vitamins is going to be affected. Your immune system is immobilized. All of those things just from the O. Henry bar. <laughs> o. Henry. <laughs> right? So every time you ingest sugar, your immune function goes down four to six hours after ingestion. It's, it's impaired. So when you look at cold and flu seasons, Halloween, Easter, Christmas, there's a connection, a big <coughs> connection. Okay, we're almost there. Cancer cells. Cancer cells have 19 times the amount of receptor sites for sugar on the cell membrane than any other cell in the body. <coughs> and that is hugely important because they're obligate sugar metabolizers. Cancer cells are obligate sugar metabolizers. They require sugar for metabolic functioning for, and survival and thriving. They're anaerobic. They don't like oxygen. So it's like, give me sugar, forget the oxygen, leave me alone, let me grow. Divorce it. You can beat it. You can move away from it. You can heal it. And they're hard words to ingest. I get that. Protein. Okay, here's the meat talk. When you take the meat off the plate, we don't, we don't know what else to put there. <laughs> It's like, what are you having for supper? Oh, I think I'm going to throw that chicken in the oven. It's like, okay, we'll throw whatever with it, but you know you're having chicken. Or you know you're having steak. I remember back in the day when mom used to, back in the day when Christ was a little fella, <laughs> I remember when mom would make a steak. Dad would eat half, and the five of us would eat the other half. <laughs> Actually four, because my brother would only eat the fat. I know, and I used to sit beside him, I'd be like, I'll trade you your meat for the fat. He's like, right on. <laughs> Who knew? But today, everybody has to have their own steak, like the size of their head. So if you take that out, what does your plate look like? Well, 50% of your plate should be raw. Raw, raw, raw. And that could be in the form of a salad, a smoothie in the morning, a wrap with, you know, 50% of that meal is going to be vegetables in the wrap, it's really not that hard. You just have to think outside the box. Soups and stews and nice, beautiful dishes plumped up with beautiful vegetables and the color because of the antioxidants. Oh, God, the, it's limitless. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's the way nature intended it. So the average person, the, actually the Canadian standard, is to have 0.8 grams of protein per pound of, or per kilogram, sorry, of body weight. USDA is 0.36 per pound of body weight, so they're relatively the same. So if you do the math on that, the average person would probably, you know, the average male would probably take in like 60, 70, maybe more grams of protein a day, which is like a couple chicken breasts, a steak, and whatever. But really what you need is about 25 to 30 grams a day, which can easily be obtained just in a morning smoothie. You don't need all that protein, contrary to popular belief. And then it's about bioavailable protein. So you think, okay, if I have a 30 gram protein piece of chicken, I have to cook it because we're not really in the art of eating raw chicken. 50% off the top, before you even put it into your mouth, is coagulated protein. So it's gone. So now your 30 grams of protein is now 15. And then you have this severe gut dysb dysbiosis happening. How much of that are you going to assimilate into the body? That's the question mark. You don't know. So if you look at bioavailable sources easily assimilated into the body, plant sourced protein are some of the best. Algae, chlorella, marine phytoplankton, spirulina, AFA blue-green algae. This is an alien language. <laughs> really great sources of bioavailable protein. And you can throw them into a smoothie. Callie Mae loves this stuff. She's like, yes, I do. We're coming, Callie Mae. <laughs> We're coming for you soon. So. The other thing that we have to consider is that as human beings, 
Our gastrointestinal system is really long. Animals eat meat because their GI systems are really short. The transit time is very quick. In humans, the meat sits in the GI system, sometimes for a week, <laughs> depending on your exit time, and it rots. It ferments and it turns. And then, so all of the hormones in the meat, all the antibiotic residues from the meat, are stagnant in your system and being reabsorbed into the bloodstream, creating endocrine disruption, andropause and menopause, testosterone reduction in men, estrogen, progesterone, craziness in women, gender bending qualities. Okay? So, when we look at omega-3s, because everyone wants to hold on to fish because they get the ever popular omega-3. So you have three types of omega-3. You have your ALA, which is an 18 carbon chain. You have GLA, which is a 20 carbon chain. And then you have DHA that the brain needs and loves, and that's a 22 carbon chain molecule. Why is that important? Because if we don't have the conversion enzymes or we fill our diet up full of omega-6s, a lot of the vegetable oils, then we don't have the conversion enzymes required to convert some of those primitive ALA, GLA, omega-3s into the more efficient, the brain-loving DHA. And we don't have a strong conversion rate on those things anyway. So, people want to hold on to the fish because they get the ever so important omega-3s, but guess what? Chlorella, marine phytoplankton, spirulina, and AFA blue-green algae all have <coughs> omega-3. So you don't have to eat it if you don't want to. Your choice. Okay. Now, vitamin B12. I'm going to touch very briefly on this because this is usually the next thing. Well, where do I get my B12? And everybody's deficient in B12 today. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people are. If you are deficient in B12, most people are also deficient in iron. And that are two signs of absorption issues, of GI disruption. There are four types of vitamin, vitamin B12 is just a catch-all phrase for the cobalamin group. So you have cyanocobalamin, which most of your supplements are, cheaply manufactured, attached to a cyanide molecule, not good. Okay? You have hydroxocobalamin, which is the natural form of B12. You have methylcobalamin, which is attached to a methyl group. You have adenosylcobalamin, which is mitochondrial B12. For most of you that suffer from a vitamin B12 deficiency, you need to be searching for a supplement or a nutraceutical that combines both adenosylcobalamin and methylcobalamin. Leave cyanocobalamin on the shelf. Most of the injectables that you get at the doctor are also cyanocobalamin. Okay, not good. We'll talk about that in more detail later on. So, two more items. What can you experience when you make a transition into this protocol? This is going to be really attractive. Dizziness, lightheadedness, lethargy, <laughs> like all of you are experiencing right now. You can have diarrhea. On the flip side, you can have some constipation because for some of you that aren't taking in enough fiber, and increase in that fiber, the body's not ready for that, that's why we need the scrubbing bubbles, right? Clean it all out. We carry, on average, about 10 pounds of impacted fecal matter in our system. Imagine that, you can lose 10 pounds just like that, no diet required. All you need is monatomic oxygen, poof, just gone, just like that. Scrubbing bubbles, that's all you need. Irritability. Yes, you will need separate bedrooms for a little while. <laughs> now, the benefits of detoxification. When you start to move the toxins out so that you can re-upload the nutrients, wonderful things happen. But it's going to take time. And it may not happen in the eight weeks. It might take your body six months. Every single person in here is carrying a different story. Every single person has had different personal experiences, different lifestyle experiences, different traditions. So this time frame can be expanded or shortened dependent on your lifestyle and where you are in your life. 
There goes another piece of paper. <laughs> so, increase in energy. I am finished though. <laughs> increase in energy, increase in mental clarity. I always say when the fog lifts, you're like, where did those children come from? <laughs> Are you really my husband? <laughs> ah, you just aged 20 years. <laughs> it just goes like that. So the fog lifts. Okay, the fog lifts. Our memories. Oh, we, rem we actually remember things. I couldn't do a program for two years that had baby brain. <laughs> you can have an increase in weight loss. I know none of you want that. So you just pretend I didn't say it. Because none of you are here to lose weight. We're all in perfect shape. Okay, that's good. Improve sleep quality and quantity. Really important today because when you sleep, you heal. Yeah. It's getting kind of creepy. Callie, you should be picking these up for me. <laughs> oh, isn't she sweet? Stimulate your body's intrinsic healing mechanisms. Very important. You're going to have an increase in immune response. Isn't that nice? You're going to have an increase in your vibrational resonance. Because the Thank you, sweetheart. Because the quintessential part of every one of us is energy. So when you take in live, vibrant foods, <laughs> you're going to elevate your vibrational resonance. And you will feel that in the relationships that you're fostering with yourself and the world around you. You're going to have a balance in homeostasis. You're going to bring that homeostatic environment back to the paradigm. Okay? Now, just some quick factors to remember. You're not going to eat standing up. You're not going to eat being stimulated. So you're not allowed to eat when you're connected to an electronic device, driving a motor vehicle, having sex, <laughs> all of that gone. Okay? You need to rest. Rest. Okay. You're not going to drink with your meals. And this is a tough one for people. I ask people to be mindful of ingesting fluid 30 minutes before your meal and an hour and a half to two hours after your meal because it will dilute your already compromised digestive enzyme profile. Okay? We don't have enough enzymes, and we're going to have a whole session on enzymes because they are very important. We do not, you cannot dilute the enzymes because you need the enzymes to digest the food to break it down. You need to chew your food until it's liquid, and then you swallow it. So you're like, okay, smoothies, three meals a day, here we go. <laughs> because if you don't chew your food, you're leaving it up to the GI, the rest of the GI system, to break it down. And it's not going to do the work. That's why we have teeth. They're chewers. Okay? That's really important. All righty. The other thing that I want you to be very mindful of when you're eating is to take nine deep breaths. You're like, forget that. I don't have time. That's like, what, five, five seconds per breath? 45 seconds. I don't have time for that. It is really important. It's the simple stuff. It's the simple stuff. So if you want to move your, your system from a sympathetic mode to a parasympathetic mode, sit down, breathe, and do not watch TV. Don't drive. Do not stimulate yourself. That is the least you can do to honor your digestive system. So I'm asking you to make a lot of changes. And I truly believe that change requires three things. You have to have an awareness that a change has to be made. I can't tell you that you need to change your world. You have to tell you that you have to change your world. And I always say, and I say this to my patients all the time, the number one thing that we will have the most difficult and challenging time with is sitting in the seat of honesty when reflecting on our life pattern. Being honest with yourself. So you have to be aware that a change has to be made, and then, you have to commit to it. You have to have a deep committing force to want the change to occur. And then you actually have to do the work to make a change. <laughs> They're just not going to stay. And if those three things, or one of those three things is not there, you will not be successful in maintaining the change. 
So that is up to you. So once again, I welcome you aboard. I want you to be here. I want to walk with you. I want you to walk with me. I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. I want to laugh with you. I want to do scrubbing bubbles with you. <laughs> You're worth the work. You're absolutely worth the work. For those of you that brought a piece of paper and a pen, I have a couple quick questions for you on the back of this page. Callie, can you pick that up for me, please? And I want you to write down one to five. I don't want you to write down the question. Thank you, honey. I only want you to write down a number. And then after today, you're going to put this in an envelope, and you're not going to look at it again. And if you don't come back, you can burn it <laughs> or save it for next year. And if you do decide to come back and you do decide to come with us, we're going to take this paper out again at the end, and you're going to write different numbers down, I guarantee it. Number one, one to ten. Ten being the most positive response, one being the least. I want you to write your energy level one to ten. Ten being like the most energy you've ever had in your life. One being like you're asleep, like you are right now. <laughs> one to ten. Write your energy level. And don't peek at your partner's response because then they lie. <laughs> right? Rate the quality of the relationships in your life overall. Are you of high quality relationships or are you entertaining low vibration relationships? I want you to rate your overall sense of well-being. Ten being like the, you're in the best life ever. One being like you're not living at all. You barely have a pulse. <laughs> How happy are you? How happy are you? Tenure at the circus? <laughs> One, you don't even know what happy is. And the most important question, do you love yourself? Have you harvested a relationship with yourself that you can look in the mirror every day and say, I love you? I do this little exercise. For some of you that have heard this talk before, I still do it. I look in the mirror in the morning and I say, I love you, and you're going to have a good day because you're with me. <laughs> some days, trust me, it's harder than others. <laughs> and you know, when we go through some challenging life circumstances, this is when these things go quickly out the window, but this is when you need them the most. This is when the support that you will find in this community, because I'm going to tell you, if you're going to walk on the journey, it's going to be tough, and you're going to want to be here because you want to know, because misery loves company. <laughs> okay? So before we end, I want to thank you for coming. This is the longest meeting because it's the introductory meeting. It's where everything is kind of put out. I have a little friend that wants to tell you a little bit about her lifestyle. It'll probably take three minutes. So if you can give me three minutes, or maybe 30 seconds, I don't know what she has planned. Her name is Callie Mae. Come on up, Callie Mae. What do you have to say? Um, whenever I'm at my aunt's, um, her brother, um, Jason, Jason always looks up the wall and says, I see Jason. <laughs> and he says hi every time. And I have crystals in the purse that I'm going to show you. And do you want to tell them about your cultured veggies? I love them. They're so yummy. And I have them for my snack when I go to bed. Now, if a seven-year-old can eat cultured vegetables, you can too. <laughs> so she has one crystal to show you. Or maybe she has, oh. 
She has lots of crystals in here. Want to speed up the process? <laughs> I'm just joking. She's looking at me like, get real, Coco. She calls me Coco. We're going to also do two workshops instead of one this year. And uh, we have lots of plans for that. Are there any questions, by the way, while we wait for the crystal show? <laughs> We're good? OK, Callie Mae. Show them. The, what are the crystals for? Okay. Where did you get them? I got some from my friend, and I got some from stores. Okay. So do you want to thank everyone for coming? Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. We'll see you in two weeks. There's no meeting here next week, so we will see you in two weeks' time. Slow down. Take a breath. Love yourself. See you in two weeks. Thank you, Callie.